Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee, conversations on race. We are now being joined by Honorable Judge Derek Mosley, who serves as the Chief Judge here at the Milwaukee Municipal Court. Thank you so much for inviting us to your courtroom. Well, Judge welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Just for starters, tell us what makes this court so unique. The thing that we're most proud of here at the Municipal Court is that there's three Municipal Court judges here. Um, but we are an entire court of the three judges are people of color. So mm -hmm. we have two African-American, uh, one male, one female, and then one Latino judge. So Judge Mosley, me, and Judge Hill are African-American, and Judge Chavez is a Latino male. So mm -hmm. it's the only all minority or all person of color court in the state. Wow, that is pretty special. Let's talk first about uh, some of the things you've done to help make Milwaukee better. You graduated from Marquette University uh, School of Law in 1995. Correct. And once you actually graduated, you created something that is still being used today. Tell us about the Milwaukee County District Attorney's Community Prosecution Unit. Yeah, so um, I was a prosecutor in the Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office. And when you're a prosecutor, officers come into the office, they tell you a, a crime com was committed, and it happened on just a random block, 3,200 of some block. Mm -hmm. And I was a transplant. I wasn't originally from Milwaukee, so that block didn't make a lot of sense to me, just a bunch of numbers. And so I decided we need to start a unit to make sure prosecutors know exactly about the neighborhoods that they service. Mm -hmm. And so we put prosecutors in the district stations where we attended all the community meetings we got to know the neighbors so when I got a, a police report that said the 3200 block of let's say North Palmer I'm like that's Mrs. Johnson's block you know so I knew exactly who the people were and more importantly they knew who I was mm -hmm. and it made it a lot easier for cases to be proved and to help people who were wrong. That is pretty amazing and you actually were sworn in when you became a municipal judge by the late great Belle Phillips. And Correct. that in itself is pretty amazing because she served as the first of many things in the city of Milwaukee as well as the state of Wisconsin. So let's talk about uh, some of the things that I was referring to and you helping change the way people think. There's implicit bias and people kind of have these and they're not necessarily conscious of those. So you conduct workshops to help break down those things, right? I do, I do, I do. Uh, judges, uh, law enforcement, um, teachers, I, I go all around the country, state, I've out, out, even done an implicit bias in Slovenia. Wow. And so, um, yeah, we have these biases. They start at a very young age. We're not even aware that we have them. And many times they run contrary to how we really feel. So deep down, I feel a certain way that I, I would never do something against a group of people, but then you wind up doing something and you think about it in retrospect, you're like, why did I do that? And, mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to bring to the attention of people that you have these and really truthfully, you really didn't stand a chance because your mind's supposed to work that way. It's supposed to operate that way. And so uh, what people don't understand is the human brain takes in 15 million bits of information per minute, but you're only consciously aware of 40 bits of that information. Wow. And so the rest of that information gets locked away in your subconscious that you access at times that you're not even aware of. So as I talk to you, you're comprehending my 40 bits of information. But someone watching us, and you don't even know this, but your mind's looking to see, you know, the, the robe, you know, my glasses, and things that you don't even think of as we talk, but your mind's registering that information. Mm -hmm. And as it registers it, it locks it back in your subconscious brain. There are certain things that trigger. So, for instance, in the Milwaukee market, if you hear on the news that two men were shot on the north side, that's all they have to say. And the north side clicks for people that, oh, that must be black people mm -hmm. because of the way Milwaukee's situated and the segregation in the city of Milwaukee. So your, your bias kicks in and you don't even know that. You just knew it was the north side. Yeah. You know, no one said two black men were killed, but you heard north side and something clicked in your brain. And that's, that's what you want to make people aware of, that that yeah. happens. And it's, it's a natural process. Your brain uses it. Um, on purpose for good reasons, but sometimes it could have negative consequences. Yeah, and I brought up the late, great Val Phillips, uh, yeah. and she really was the person that uh, helped swear you in as the judge that you are today. You also uh, really share a lot of great black history uh, during the month of February in particular. Why is that so important in your opinion? 
So like you, I, I went to school and only heard about certain people. And I had a conversation when I was very young with a, uh, a young boy I went to school with. He was white and he said, what have blacks ever done for America? Because he's reading the same book I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And all you saw was Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King. And that started this journey for me. And I was like, well, what is going on? What have we contributed to? And the books were pretty much devoid of anything of any substance. And what happened was the revolution of the internet, which allowed you to access the files and, um, and learn all of the, I mean, I, the, the thing that I tell people that are amazed about is 94 years before the pilgrims, we just had Thanksgiving, 94 years before the pilgrims, they were an African colony. They were here. They were Africans who were brought here by the Spanish to start a settlement, and they, the Spanish scuttled it because there's just too much to deal with. And those Africans still lived there. Mm -hmm. That's 94 years before the Pilgrims, but that's a story that we never heard. There's so much rich history, even in the state of Wisconsin. What do you say to those watching? How can we all work together to make Milwaukee a better place to live for us all? I always say this to people. Milwaukee has enough people who are detractors, right? Everybody can't wait to say something bad about Milwaukee, right? So we need those people who are uh, cheerleaders, if you will, for the city, because there's so much going on in this city. And to be honest with you, we're the economic engine of this state. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Milwaukee and uh, not only just the industry, but just the people that come here and the, the travel and the tourists, the bucks, the brewers, you, you name it, it makes this state great. And so, I just tell people, just see it. You know, the people who have the hardest opinion on Milwaukee have never left and lived somewhere else most, for the most part, um, or have never really spent time here. Mm. And so once you get to spend time here and see the people, meet the people, talk to the people, you realize that it's a fantastic place. All right, well, thank you so much for, again, inviting us to your courtroom. Yeah. And most of all, thank you for your time and all that you do. I appreciate it, thank you for coming.